Hey there, it's Tammy with It's All About the Dogs. Noelle with Positive Directions Canine Academy. And today, well, I've got notes because we're old and we can't remember everything. <laughs> I can lose track of what I'm talking about halfway through a sentence. And so. then you're off on another tangent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so today we were, we were going to talk about eight ways to uh, help your overweight dog. Yeah, obesity is a big problem. It is. Um, and I see it in a lot of class dogs that walk through. Um, and you know it, it always boggles my mind how it happens yeah people overindulge their dogs yeah you yeah. know a lot and they don't if they don't have the activity level to mm -hmm. keep the weight off that can be a problem especially with um particular breeds right like dachshunds dachshunds corgis um beagles are another one i see that are just habitually just huge right um the last week I've seen a couple of golden retrievers that were just humongous. And labs. Labradors. We've seen yeah. labs that have been yep. that have been overweight too. So, yep. so, and there's ways to keep your dog healthy. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to, to ask you was how do you know um, what your dog's healthy weight is? You know, your dog's going to show you what their healthy weight is by um, just looking at them. <laughs> Like this one. Yeah. So there's a, a quick and easy trick that I don't know if most people know about, but if you make a fist, the back of your hand is plump and um, doesn't usually have like a lot of, um, it's more plump than the rest of your hand. Let me just put it right, that way. Right. So if you're touching your dog and you don't feel any kind of ribs at all, your dog's body weight is too much. If um, you feel along here and you can feel divots in between each um, rib, your dog's too thin. And right along here, your dog's perfect. So you can fill each rib, but there's fat around them. So that's how you can tell just at a glance if your dog is at the correct weight or not. And some dogs are predisposed to be overweight. So. They are. And it's really mis... How do I want to say this? The, the labels on the back of the bag are like suggested serving sizes. Um, I found them to be way too much. I have found them to be way too much too. And so if you are feeding, especially if you're feeding in the upper regions of the suggested feeding plan, you could be feeding your dog too much. And um, that's not through any fault of your own. It's just you're taking the bag's guidelines as, um, right? Yeah. And so they're taking every dog with every metabolism and saying that this is the general range for that. Some dogs you may have to feed more, some dogs you have to feed less. Um, so that can be very misleading and misguided to right. a lot of people out there. Well, and, and another way to tell if your dog, what your dog's healthy weight is, is to ask your vet. Ask your vet, yeah, take right? your dog in and your vet can easily tell you um, just how much your dog should weigh according to their breed and um, age and activity level. Yep. And especially if you have a mixed breed, it's best to ask your vet. Mm -hmm. If you have a purebred dog, you can go on your breed's website mm -hmm. and it will give the, the breed standard and tell what they should weigh. Yep. I don't know if everybody out there knows what a breed standard is, but each parent Good club point. <laughs> for um, different breeds puts together a standard. And a standard is kind of like a cookbook. If you were going to make the perfect Irish red and white, it tells you um, everything from eye color to eye shape to how tall they should be to how much they should weigh to every little detail about that dog. And boys are different than girls. Mm -hmm. And boys so. usually weigh a little bit more than girls do. Um, it's not always the case, but it's it's pretty close. You know, it's, it's that way for, for the majority of the breeds out there. So if you're not sure what your dog should be and you don't have a veterinarian, go in, Google your dog's um, breed standard and it'll tell you exactly what your dog should weigh. Good. Yep. So the next thing on our list is how to keep is keeping your dog active is another one and that's not just physically that's also mentally yes mentally and physically active is incredibly important we all need exercise um whether that's a walk around the block a couple times a day or it's throwing the ball in the backyard or it's coming up with maybe um you want to teach your dog a new trick or um, anything like that anytime you are out there and you're physically working and active with your dog, it pays off dividends um, in the long run. 
Well, and if you have multiple dogs, a lot of times they play together. Mm -hmm. So my Border Collie Lucy, which I, you've seen in some of the videos that we've had, she was overweight. Um, she got she got a little lazy uh, a couple of years ago over the winter. And, but after Zella came along, she I, I, and I did adjust her diet, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Mm -hmm. But after Zella came along, she did lose it, and she's kept it off because they play together an awful lot. Yeah, and that's so, so, so important. So important. Um, another thing that can affect your dog's weight is if they've been recently spayed or neutered. Oh yeah. So yeah, um, that sure. actually will mess with your dog's metabolism, making it so that they need require less calories in order to stay at the weight that they were comfortable with when they had their hormones. And typically more exercise at mm -hmm. that point too. Yep. So that's a good point. Yep. Um, the, the distinguishing between being hungry and begging. <laughs> my dogs are I have to place them strategically around the, the room when uh -huh. I eat because otherwise they're all right here in front of me and they all want my sandwich mm -hmm. you know or whatever yep um, so they all get to go in their spot and they have to lay there until I'm done because I know they're not hungry because usually they have just eaten their dinner before I fix mine uh -huh. so are they baking because they're hungry or are they begging because they're begging? They're begging because they're begging. And there's yeah. a difference between the, the dog is begging and the dog is starving to death, oh mm -hmm. my God. <laughs> and they look very similar, guys. They, <laughs> they it, it does, it, it requires the, the sad puppy dog look and the drool and yes and oh. Well now, and, and I, I can tell when they're hungry though too because they tell me. <laughs> About 5.30 in the afternoon, if I'm still sitting at my desk, mm -hmm. they start coming in and hovering, especially my old little old man, Titus, and he comes and tells me, hello, do you realize that it's 5.30? It's time to eat, and I'm dying of starvation. <laughs> so, yes, that's truly hunger. Yeah, it is. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with giving your dog a little snack here and there. <laughs> right, but not Here and there, yeah. but don't make a habit of it. And um, table scraps is a bad table habit. Table scraps is a really yeah. bad habit. Yeah. And it's kind of like having an open bag of chips. If um, you only eat one at a time, you're still eating the whole bag. <laughs> that's right. Well, and that's the next thing on our list was limit the treats and the, and the table scraps. And mm -hmm. like you said, if I have a bag of corn chips, mm -hmm. I am liable to just sit down and eat corn chips like one right after the other. Right. And your dog will do that too if they're allowed to. They will. You know, and that speaks to feed feeding. Free feeding. Yes. Some people do that, especially mm -hmm. that have little tiny dogs, and it's not always in their best interest. So free feeding is where you put your dog's kibble or food in a bowl and you leave it sitting out and they get to go over and eat at their leisure. And what ends up happening is you create a dog who snacks all day long mm -hmm. and is never really hungry. Um, the downside of that is there's there's so many downsides to that that um, one of them is it makes it really hard to, to predict bowel movements and it's really hard to potty train a dog who's been free fed. Um, and they, crew, they, they gain weight fast oh, that way they too. Do. Right. They do, it's like having everything you ever wanted to eat in your cupboard and nobody there to tell you that you can't have it. And pretty right. soon. <laughs> Day long. Yeah, and you just do that all day long every day and you do that every day for a month You're gonna get on the scale a month later and that be absolutely shocked I, at yep, what you exactly. <laughs> So yeah, so it's really important that um, you feed your dogs on a schedule that you feed them um, a certain amount each time and each time I feed my dogs I look down over the top of them and if I'm starting to lose my waist a little bit then I know I need to back off well and, and it we wrote this down too. Have a clear idea of mm -hmm. what your dog should eat mm -hmm. and how much, mm -hmm. because like, well, like you said earlier, the dog food bag is not necessarily the best guideline. Right. And even us humans, from meal to meal, sometimes we're we're ravenous and we eat everything on our plate, and sometimes we're just not that hungry and we'll eat a little bit, but we don't eat everything. And weather can play a factor in that. Oh, if it's yeah. really hot, right. you you may not be as as hungry. When it's really cold, you may be more hungry. Right. So. I have one that doesn't, that when it's hotter weather like it is today, mm -hmm. he doesn't like to eat breakfast very much. Mm -hmm. You know? It's like, yeah, yeah. I'll poke at it. And but. so I'll put it away because mm -hmm. I don't free feed. And mm -hmm. if I left it out, the other three would devour it, yep. you know? So I put his food away and maybe about noon he might feel like he wants to eat. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I don't leave it out right. for him. Right. So, and, and also, um, I feed my diet. There's been a topic on several of the pages that I'm on. If you're in one of the English setter sites, you probably have seen discussions about how much to feed your dog and how little to feed your dog and do they eat, you know, three cups a day. My dogs eat about two and a half, between two and a half and three cups a day, the big ones, mm -hmm. the, the setters, mm -hmm. including that one. Yeah. Um, and my corgis eat half a cup a day. But it says on the on the bag to feed them four cups a day. Mm -hmm. There's no way. Mm -hmm. I'd have a bunch of fat setters. <laughs> yes, you would. Yes, you would. And my corgis, it says that they're supposed to eat a cup a day. If I fed them a cup a day, they would be absolutely round as could possibly be. They, bellies would drag mm -hmm. around. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and, and so when you did put them on a diet, like for Lucy, I started cutting her food down and putting green beans in her food. Perfect. Canned green beans. Mm -hmm. I used to buy some cans of green beans and and uh, maybe cut her food down, I think by about a quarter cup mm -hmm. or thereabouts, and then just put some green beans in her food. Mm -hmm. um, and she lost, she lost some weight really fast. Yeah, they do. Um, the green beans are great. It kind of helps uh, add as a filler. It's nutritious for the dog. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, some other alternatives that you could do are air popped popcorn. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, rice cakes. Take pumpkin? a rice cake and, and put it in there. A spoonful or two of pumpkin. It's got a lot of um, fiber in it mm -hmm. and so that's going to help your dog feel full. Well and uh, Lucy, she was, she was be the vet said she was probably between three and five pounds overweight. Mm -hmm. On a dog that's only 38 pounds, that should be 38 pounds, mm -hmm. three pounds is a lot. It's a lot of weight. It is. Mm -hmm. So she was weighing, I think she weighed in at 42 pounds mm -hmm. and that was, that was way too much yeah. for her. Yep. So in it, the green beans, you know, for a while t did the trick. When I started, when I started weaning her off the green beans, I added some of her food back, but not as much. Right. So she still eats less than what she did before we started that. Right. And you know, I've got something to say about diet food because there's a lot of diet foods out there, weight loss formulas oh, and for all the, that and kind that of stuff. Oh, for prepackaged dog food? Prepackaged weight loss food. Yeah. That's kind of like eating Jenny Craig every day. Yeah. And um, <laughs> forever and ever. Forever and ever and ever. And I know I wouldn't want to eat that every day. So feed them their regular feet food, just feed a little bit less of it. Customize it a and little customize bit. And customize it a little bit, add some, some fruits and some vegetables in there, and um, that'll help take up some of the, the empty spaces. Well, and along those same lines, you don't want to go cold turkey and just, you know, take your dogs, say they're eating a cup a day, and just take it down to a half a cup. Oh my God. Because then they'll, that's going to be like starving them to death. Yeah, then they so really will you be do want to, if you want to do that and take it down to half a cup, mm -hmm maybe mix some pumpkin and some green beans together, put it on top of that. So mm -hmm. that, so they still feel full. Yes. Um, otherwise you're gonna have a sad dog. <laughs> right, and gradually reduce the amount. So if you're yeah. feeding, if you're gonna cut it by half a cup, do that slowly over the course of, maybe take an eighth of a cup out and um, add a couple extra green beans and some pumpkin, pumpkin. And every day just keep reducing it just by a little bit until you get to that goal in about a week or 10 days. Right, because you think about yourself. Right. You wouldn't want to do cold turkey. I know I've done that before. I've done it's that really and, bad. and that lasts about two or three days and then I'm like, okay, that's it. Get then. me a bag of chips. <laughs> oh. Right, yeah, I know. Well, yeah. and the, the, the last thing is stick with it. Don't go back to your old habits. Right. So if your dog, you've, you've cut them down now mm -hmm. you've, and you don't want to go back to feeding them a lot of extra table scraps, feeding them a lot of extra treats and things like that. Mm -hmm. Just, yep. just stick with stick it, with it. maintain. And getting out and taking your dog for a walk is one of the best things for both of you. Yeah. So don't forget to increase that activity, but don't increase it so much that you're walking miles and miles and miles. Just, yeah, yeah just take it easy, take build it easy up to and it. And build slowly up to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and we're gonna talk about walking your dog in the hot weather here as well. Yes, so we are. So like, this video and subscribe to our channels. Absolutely. So you can get the, the skinny on how to walk your dog in hot weather. Yes, and share with your friends. Thank you guys. Great. Have a good day.